there's been a few interesting developments over the last couple of months. And we'll probably start with the biggest one, which is the, uh, the regulatory framework, which underpins our revenue framework at DBCT. Uh, we've been operating under a, what's called a heavy-handed regulatory regime for about 20 years now. And what that really means is that the, regular, uh, the revenues that we earn at the terminal historically have been determined by the QCA. So historically, the QCA has used a, uh, a building blocks approach to determining a revenue cap, which is probably very similar to what Horizon's enjoyed in the past and very similar to what you see at most of the large uh, power utilities. Uh, what they've done in the last couple of months is approved a transition to a lighter-handed regulatory framework. And uh, what that means is that rather than have the competition authority determine a fixed revenue cap that we're allowed uh, to own over a typical five-year regulatory period, uh, we now have the ability to negotiate access charges directly with our customers. Uh, so that new regulatory regime will kick off from 1 July. Uh, this year, and it will mean that for the first time we will have an opportunity to sit down with our customers face to face and negotiate what we believe, uh, well hopefully what we mutually believe, is a reasonable access charge for the use of the terminal over the next five year regulatory period. Uh, there are a couple of uh, process steps that we still need to work through before uh, that's fully signed off, but uh, they are largely process steps. So the QCA put out a final decision on our undertaking in March. Uh, for those of you who are au fait with reading regulatory decisions, and I hope that's not too many of you because they're not particularly exciting, uh, you will have read that uh, the QCA actually rejected our application, uh, which looks concerning when you read the front page, but if you turn the page and read the next 250, uh, you discover that what the QCA actually said was that they approved our transition to a light-handed framework, but they didn't approve all the detail that we submitted in our original undertaking. So we need to go back and change a few things, uh, provide uh, greater detail in terms of information to parties that we're negotiating with. But so long as we go back to the QCA uh, within 60 days of their original decision, which I think is about the 29th of 30th of May from memory, uh, as long as we go back and resubmit as per what they've said is acceptable, uh, then they will approve that and it will take effect from 1 July. So we will do that. We've been through the QCA's decision. We're very happy with it. Uh, we're quite comfortable resubmitting on the terms that the QCA has prescribed for us, uh, and therefore we expect that to be ticked off and approved and uh, to take effect from 1 July. Uh, the obvious question that we get coming out of that is, well, what will revenues look like for the next five-year regulatory period? Uh, Nathan's asked that question about uh, 13 or 14 different ways over the last few weeks. Uh, look, I can't give you any uh, definitive uh, guidance at this point in time, but if you were looking to try to put some uh, uh, estimates around a range, I can tell you that the, the access charge for the last five years has been in the order of about $2.50 a tonne. Uh, historically, access charges at DBCT have ranged between probably two thirty at the low end and about $3.10 at the high end. Uh, the port to the north of us, Abbott Point, is privately owned by the Adani Group. Uh, in the government's great wisdom, when they sold that terminal, they chose not to regulate it, despite the fact that it's vert vertically integrated, but not that that's a sore point. Um, and uh, they have the ability negoti to negotiate charges directly with their customers at Abbott Point. We largely share the same customers, just different mines, but by and large the same mining companies, uh, and they've negotiated charges at their port around $5 a ton. So clearly uh, there is some upside potential, uh, but having said that, we're also extremely cognizant of the fact that we do live under a regulatory regime that's reset every five years. There will be another one of these reset process, processes in uh, 2026. Uh, it's important to us that we bed down this light-handed framework for the longer term. Uh, we don't want it to just be a, a five-year flash in the pan with a return to heavy-handed regulation in 2026. So we will be taking you know, a reasonable approach to the, to the negotiations. We don't want them to all end up in arbitration in front of the QCA. Um, you know, and to the extent that there is value to be captured, uh, we're happy to be patient and, and capture that value incrementally over time. So. I'm sure that's given you absolutely no further clue on what the access charge would be, but there's some of the things that we're thinking about uh, as we approach that, that first negotiation. 
Uh, maybe the other thing I might touch on quickly while I've got the floor um, is the fact that there is the opportunity for further expansion at WCT. Uh, we're currently at a nameplate capacity of about 85 million tonnes and uh, we're sitting on a queue of access seekers for about another 25 million tonnes of capacity. Uh, we completed a, a FEL1 and a FEL2 which uh, in layman's terms is a concept study and a pre-feasibility study. Uh, that pre-feasibility study finished December last year and uh, there was some uncertainty about whether we would be able to secure the support of access seekers to kick off the full uh, FEL3 bankable feasibility study. Uh, I'm happy to report that all of uh, the access seekers who underwrote the costs of our concept and pre-fee study uh, stepped up to underwrite uh, what is about a 26 to $28 million spend to do the full bankable feasibility study. And uh, that study actually kicked off uh, Monday this week. Uh, so that's about a, an 18 month piece of work that will take us through till the back end of 2022. Uh, and at that point, uh, depending upon whether or not those access seekers who've underwritten the studies convert those underwriting agreements into long term take or pay contracts, uh, you know, we would then be making a decision about whether we go forward and uh, finance and execute the implementation of what we refer to as our ADEX project, which would add about another 15 million tonnes of capacity to the terminal at a total capital cost of about $1.2 billion.